some people have the ability to transform their house very easily from a 2D chip into um, the perfectly coordinated home. Others, it's a struggle. People lack confidence often because colour is one of the first things that people notice when they walk into the room. And funnily enough, one of the only things that you remember having visited someone's house. I slept in the blue bedroom. Their dining room was red. Uh, they lived at the White House. You know, we use colour all the time subconsciously without really thinking about it too much. So when it comes to choosing a colour for your house, that can be very, very frightening for some people. What I've tried to do is understand and create little tools which make understanding colour easier for people. I grew up on a cattle farm in outback New South Wales. My parents uh, were farmers. Life on the farm was tough. It was either like a drought or it was floods or, you know, the cattle were diseased. One of the farms next door was bought by a famous 1950s uh, rock and roll band. They had a daughter called Roxanne, who was this gorgeous, long, blonde-haired beauty who landed in our one teacher school in the middle of nowhere. And she arrived wearing gypsy skirts, long, blonde hair, no knickers, and we just thought she was this great goddess. And age 15, she was whipped up and taken to New York and worked for Wilhelmina as a model. And so from the age of 15 to 19, all I wanted to do was go and live with Roxanne in New York. So moving from a rural community to an incredibly urban, the biggest city I could find, uh, was enormous, just visually for a start. These huge canyons of, of skyscrapers, the light was so different. It was incredibly gray. Uh, well, I kind of ran out of money actually and I had to get a job because I was busy painting away but couldn't sell any of the paintings. So I found myself using what skills I had to get a job in an art gallery and they had this terrible technique of selling paintings. If someone walked into the gallery wearing a particular colour then the unwritten rule was that I had to go out the back and unwrap all the paintings that contained the same colours that they were wearing. <laughs> It's incredible how many people walked out holding the paintings and that got me thinking there must be more to this colour thing. The worst client I ever had was probably um, this mad opera queen who lived in West London. She was mad on bright pink, bright bougainvillea, bright rhododendron, all the flowers that I hate. One way of dealing with that nightmare client was to introduce lots of different neutrals that could ground the supporting architectural features of a house. You might have to consider using colour in places which are hidden from everyday view as your compromise. I remember in my kitchen, my, my ex wanted this bright pink, you know, but I wasn't gonna have a bright pink kitchen. I didn't want the colour of, you know, Chaparelli pink. So we painted all the cupboards inside. So when you unpacked the dishwasher, it was much more fun. I'm at the moment designing a whole new colour palette which will be launched next year and I spend hours just moving little bits of colour around on a page. I can sit there for weeks because there is sometimes a colour which I, I'm mad about and I, it might take a year before anyone ever orders it and I'm like, I hear that order coming in, I'm like, Eureka, <laughs> hooray, someone's, you know, got Snedersham gold or, you know, one of these crazy colours that I've designed. My business is successful. It was started 15 years ago and uh, we're sold in 145 stores in England. Um, we're under license all over America with Stark Paint, uh, which is a new venture for me and that's why I'm very excited about that. Yeah.